It was one day in 2012 when Fiona Redding woke up. She was 37. She was at home with two tiny kids. She was drinking every day, overweight, unfit and unhealthy. She had a lot of issues with her finances and was unable to get to work. She felt deeply disconnected and very, very alone. She saw herself staring down the barrel of a future life that she could just not imagine living. She had one burning question that she could no longer escape. How has this become my life? She was so deeply unhappy and she knew that something needed to change. Fast forward to today, and she set a grand new vision, which is living out in her life. She had become crystal clear on the person she wanted to be, how she wanted to be living, and the direction she wanted her life to take. She decided to get out of her own way, and now she wants to help you get out of yours. Over the last seven years, Fiona's life has completely transformed in every single area, and through The Happiness Hunter, she now teaches and shares everything that she's learned over that time. I had the chance to speak with her to go through that journey and I'm delighted to introduce you to Fiona today. My name is Angela Raspis. I'm a business mentor, author and self-worth educator and you're listening to Your Next Chapter, a podcast about change and challenges, goals and dreams and the mix of strategy and self-worth it takes to step into the next version of you. Fiona, welcome to the Your Next Chapter podcast. I am delighted, seriously delighted to have you here as a guest. I know that our work and our philosophies and our way of looking at the world, they're so darn parallel, but I really want to dig down into how you came about the chapter that you're walking through now. So thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you for having me, Angela. It's an absolute joy to be here with you today. It's those conversations that two people who are are like-minded and we get the opportunity to share these perspectives with the ladies who are listening right now and we really hope, I'm saying we because I know we're we're cut from the same cloth, that you walk away today with this understanding that, and I love this, I took this off your website, it boils down to this, if you can learn to change your mind about things, then you can literally literally change your world. Tell us more because that is such a powerful statement. So I absolutely believe that our thoughts create our reality, like our, our, how we experience our life and the, the way we see the world and the experiences that we have and the conversations that we have, everything is due to our mindset. So if we can change the way we think, if we can look at our belief systems and our programming and not just accept that as is, like that is how it has always been, that is how it is always going to be, that's just the way I think or that's just the way I believe or that's how the way I am, if we can accept that we can change that and then do something about that, we actually change the whole experience of our life. Yeah, it's that, it's that when you hear that, it's like, okay, there's a magic key, I can unlock this door and off I go. Yeah. But how do we get to that stage where we feel as though we've got that efficacy? Over our, over our world, how do we, I'm going to use your phrase here, how do we wake up? Tell us about your awakening when suddenly it was like the sword and the stone moment when you realised that you actually had the tools in your hand. What brought you to that point? So before I go to there, what I just wanted to say on that is that how we can actually believe it is possible is, one, that we have to believe it is possible, and, two, we have to believe it is possible for me. So it's not just that it's possible for other people that that could possibly happen, but it is actually possible for me for that to happen too. Do you just before? Okay, I'm, now you're going to make me do it just before. Yeah. <laughs> I've got I've got this philosophy here. See if it if it rings true for you. I've got this three step belief about belief. Okay, number one yeah. is that first of all you believe in me, and then I believe in you. And then I believe in me. So it's almost like you need to have the power of example and and somebody that acts a little as your champion and then you can go out there believing on your own. How do you feel about that? Do you feel like having somebody in your court is important to get the ball rolling? How does it start moving? Do you know, it's really interesting that you say that because I do, I, I actually think that's true as well. And I'll often say to my clients, you know, borrow my belief in you first like until you can believe it for yourself know that my belief in you 
is enough. Like just borrow that belief for the moment until you can build that for yourself. So I do think there is a huge element of that and, yeah, that's so funny. Like, have you been snooping? Because that is actually on the homepage of my website. Borrow my belief in you until you have it for yourself. I told you, we're cut from the same cloth, my darling. Because it's the truth, the truth, <laughs> and is. the truth never changes. Like, yeah. So that is actually how it is. And I look at the, you know, if we're going back to that change in my life, you know, that moment where I was just like, holy, oh, my gosh, this is my life. Like how did this happen? Mm. And if I look at the steps that sort of happened from that point, I think the real real moment, the real moments of transformation, I think the first step that had to happen was that I needed to make a decision that I, I wanted to change. Like this is no longer acceptable the way that my life has been living, I'm, how I'm living my life. I'm not happy. Um, I'm really quite concerned about the future trajectory. You know, if I'm looking at my current trajectory, where I'm going to be in the future, like that was quite horrifying for me and it, it, it really rattled me rattled me deeply, like really brought me to my knees, you know, in every area, you know, physically. I just I felt like I'd been just like the the rug had been ripped out from underneath me. It was this absolute moment of full frontal exposure about myself and my life and how it was. And I think in that moment of absolute like it was almost truth, you know, this is actually the reality. You can't deny it. You can't pretend it's not like this anymore. You can't blame other people for the fact that you're here. That moment of decision where I actually just said, you know what, I actually don't care. I'll do whatever it takes. This is no longer acceptable and I'm, I'm willing to do whatever it takes to change. But then if I look at the steps that sort of happened from there, you know, I found people on YouTube, I read books, by people, I um, ultimately ended up finding my own sort of mentor and guide through um, the, this, working with my teacher, um, Dr. Assam. They all believed that it was possible, mm-hmm. and they were showing. A, they were sh- they were like the way showers of how it could be and how you could create this change in your life. You know, teaching concepts like um, the present moment awareness and acceptance and forgiveness and gratitude and creating um, understanding the power of your mind and that the understanding of how important it was to really be aware of your emotional state and how all of it worked together. So I think even though they might not have been directly saying to me, hey, Fiona, I believe in you, (laughs) the fact that they their life's work was about sharing what they knew was so empowering. That idea, we were talking about this just before we hit um, record, is the idea that we can hear messages, where they be you know, YouTube, a blog post, a, a newsletter, a book, whatever, and they can keep washing over us and washing over us and washing over us. Then suddenly one day, and I can't, can never say when it's going to happen, but one day, right person, right moment, right mindset, bang, suddenly it hits. And that sounds as though it was something that happened to you on, on that, that day back in 2012 when you woke up suddenly. Yeah. And, and I think something to explore here because – in my work with the next chapter, chapter cycle of change, I talk about the discontent continuum where it sort of starts with just, just a little bit like not happy, Jan. And then it moves up to like the, you know, over time up to the full, like trumpets blaring for God's sake, change. As you said, that forward trajectory when you actually allowed your mind to go forward and think me doing the same thing in five years, 10 years, 20 years. No, this has to change. But a lot of us, we, we see that stuff. And it's too spooky. It's too scary. And we, and that's when the numbing behaviors often come in. You know, the, the alcohol, the drugs, the shopping, the, you know, the, the internet, the food. Oh my God, the food, all of those things. And I know you and I share a past in, in the way that the way we used to numb ourselves. So we couldn't, when we weren't ready to face up to reality was with alcohol. Yeah. And that can be, a, that can be a really common experience. It's, not, it, I think tides are changing. When I stopped drinking back in 2006, it was still, well, my experience of it was it was still a deeply shameful thing. You did not talk about it. But I celebrate the fact that things like Sober in the Country and the first totally non-alcoholic bottle shop is open just down the road. And there seems to be a lot more acceptance in talking about it. And so the the ways of getting help to move out of that addictive state are far more common. Was that the sort of experience that you had? Yeah, that's a really interesting point that you raised there because – 
when I gave up drinking, so it, you know, obviously, even though it sort of it felt like it happened, you know, in this one instance, and it was like everything sort of imploded in my life in a very, very short space of time. That had actually kind of been years in the making. I mean, let's talk probably my whole adult life, if not my whole entire life. But that moment when I was just like, you know what, I need to stop drinking. But it was so fascinating because I knew, like, and I knew I was in a really unhappy relationship and I knew that probably I needed to make a decision about that relationship, but I knew that I couldn't do that while I was drinking and I was really scared that probably a very unfounded belief, but it was a belief that I had at the time that my kids were going to be taken off me because I was an unfit mother. Like it was full on. And, you know, I was like, well, I probably need to make a decision about this relationship, but, you know, if this does turn nasty and, you know, we end up in court or whatever, I don't want my drinking to be used against me. And, um, you know, I just wasn't, I just was not happy about, you know, the kind of example I was providing for my children. I felt like I was being a terrible mother. I was hung over all the time. And there was this one day when I was driving in the car and my kids were so little, like my daughter was one, not quite two, and my son was maybe two or three. And I looked in the rear vision mirror and I was so hung over and I just felt so shit. And I just looked at the mirror, these two little kids, and I this voice, there was this so clear in my mind, this voice in my head said, Fiona, you need to stop drinking and you need to start meditating. It was so clear. But it was probably six months from that point until I actually did stop drinking. And it was just this absolute moment of, right, I, I, this needs to stop. Like, I'm done here. Yeah. And what I did, I Googled up, um, I was like, I don't think AA is for me. Um, and I was just, I can't even remember what I typed in, but I came across this website called Hello Sunday Morning. And it was basically a blog that people, you could just sign up and you had an avatar and you could just blog about your experience of giving up drinking and connect with other people that were also trying to change their relationship with alcohol as well. And this blog had only been started by a guy called Chris Rain. He's no longer um, with, with the charity anymore. Like it's grown, it's massive. Mm. But it started about a year earlier um, and I had an avatar. I called myself happiness because I was just like, I was so unhappy and all I wanted to do was be happy. And that was life-changing for me because I actually connected with other people who were trying to change their relationship with alcohol and some of them I'm still really good friends with. But it was still, that was in 2012, it still wasn't like now it's everywhere mm. and there's sober coaches and there's Dry July and there's Feb Fast and there's all of these other kind of initiatives around alcohol, which didn't really exist back even in 2012, which is what, nine years ago. So I think even over the course of the last, you know, eight or nine years, there's been a huge shift and I think that shift has been because we know, actually we know we've got a really big problem. It's a big problem and it's not talked about enough. But like we're trying to solve it now with here's the antidote of just not drinking. But actually we're drinking while we're drinking and we need to we need to address those root causes. You're absolutely right. And I guess it's a huge relief that there are more opportunities, more places to turn to, more places where you can say, put your hand up and say, you know what? I have a feeling that yeah. I have a problem here and it is holding me back yeah. in so many ways. I loved when um, I was reading your notes about our chat today that at this stage, you don't even feel like you've scratched the surface in terms of what is possible for you now. I know when I when I was um, you know, right in the heart of addiction, and, and I talk about it a lot because there's no shame about it now, there's just a desire to show people or just by the power of simple example what's possible instead. Yeah. And I, used, I used to say that you know, I was going down this track and then alcohol took me off on this huge side detour way over here and now I'm back on track towards becoming the person I was always meant to be. And I couldn't have done that without help. So I'm incredibly you know, grateful that that, that, that happened. And once we get that, that you know, one part, that's one part of the big picture. It's not like, oh, look, put, put the drink down and that's it. Suddenly sunshine and buttercups and unicorns. There's, oh, no, no, no. <laughs> there's work to be done. But I think the most important thing in this whole podcast series is about the, the opportunity to change. And by opportunity, I mean when you do take the reins into your own hands and listen to what's going on going on inside and then and then take the action and I know one of the things or I suspect one of the things that you often talk about is the happiness hunter which is I love your logo it's gorgeous with the arrow and the whole idea of that we have the right to be happy and I, am I right in thinking that it's not a this is not a Pollyanna approach it's not like well no I never have negative thinking I never have negative feelings all I want is happiness it's not as cut and dry as that 
Can you talk to me more about what you mean by the concept of, of being a happiness hunter and what it involves? Oh, yeah. And, you know, like it, it, it's not for the faint hearted, this road either. <laughs> it, it really isn't. But I think what happened for me, and it's probably a similar experience for you as well, like just the fact of deciding and taking responsibility like that, like choosing to take responsibility for my life and all that it entailed and where I was and what was going on, that was so empowering. Yeah. Like it was, that was the transformation, you know, having to deal with the, you know, withdrawals and all of the, uh, all of the stuff that was coming up. You know, decades, the emotions, the emotions. decades of suppressed stuff. Yeah, yeah, and dealing with you know very fractured relationships and dealing with the um, fallout from you know not having managed my life properly or um, taken responsibility for my finances, taken responsibility for properly for my career. You know, like all of those things. You know, really having to deal with the fallout of all of that was so much better for me than actually feeling like the how I felt when I was drinking and just kept, felt completely out of control in my life. Like at least now I, 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 I had the data. I was able to work with my life from a data perspective, not a drama perspective, and just go, okay, very methodically. And that's where the seven elements framework for life integration was came from. It's where all of my philosophy and methodology has come from was literally through how did I rebuild my life? Like where do where do I start? What do I need to work through? So that idea of um, really, you know, taking that absolute responsibility and then looking at the steps that you need to to, to take and know that there's just a clearly mapped out pathway. There's clear steps that you need to take and you can just start taking those steps one step at a time, working through the stuff that gets presented to you along the way. And look, one of my, one of the core philosophies really of the happiness hunter is that happiness is to be found in the overcoming of at obstacles and challenges in our lives and not in the absence of them. Like it's not about everything being, you know, easy and smooth sailing and stuff because it's like kind of within the challenge comes the growth and within that moving through something and that feeling of hope and hopeful for, for the change, for me, that's where the happiness is. It's like when you've kind of got everything you think you want, it's, it's extrinsically motivated. It's like they're extrinsic kind of measures of success. Um, being a happiness hunter is really about identifying your intrinsic success measures and learning how to become that person who absolutely can go to bed at the end of the day and put your head on the pillow and just know that you've done your best today. Whatever whatever the day held that you know that you showed up to the best of your ability in every every area of your life. I love that definition that and just making that so clear that what we're talking about here is what intrinsically lights you up. What yeah. intrinsically ticks the boxes that are for you, not the ones that society says, yeah, you should do this and this is what success looks like and when you have this, you'll be happy. This is really an internal job. Yeah, 100%. And, you know, it's really interesting even this week because I've actually um, realised I've, I've just come really full circle with a lot of stuff that I've been working towards. Like I just had like, um, I know you'll appreciate this, like I just went down very rough cut of my numbers. Like I got absolutely smashed at the start of COVID, like smashed, I had to move in with my ex and his wife and their baby daughter. My kids and I had to give up my place, um, ended up staying with them for three months. Then we ended up moving into another rental across the other side of town. And then in about February this year, we ended up moving into this place. I've got beach water views, um, a living exactly where I want, got into the school zone that I needed one of my kids to go to school to. I literally live across the road from the beach. I've been manifesting beach views for years and I live I basically am living in my dream house I've like had got a couple of programs with my business that have really kind of just they took because I just really had to dig so deep after you know having to go okay my business model isn't working in this environment I need to change what I'm doing got everything online I just worked out last financial year this financial year finished in in the end of June over a 550% increase in revenue. That is fantastic. I am I celebrating for you. I know, but what was really interesting, I'm just about to publish my second book, you know, like all of these, extri- uh, you know, extrinsic measures, like external measures, like I've set goals and I've achieved them. What I actually realised this week, last week, and I was really doing a deep reflection about happiness and, you know, like where am I at and stuff, and I'm like, 
feel a bit flat. Like there's not a huge amount of joy going on in my life at the moment. And I'm just in kind of the delivery mode. And you know what I realized? I was like, I'm ready for the next challenge. Like I'm really ready for the next Mm. big test in my life because actually that's where I'm happiest, where I'm right in the thick of the challenge and really having to dig deep and, you know, what are my weaknesses here? Why aren't I achieving my goals? And setting, it's not even about achieving the goals. It's about who you have to become along the way. And I'm more and more understanding. Like that to me is happiness. And the whole idea of the happiness hunter was I was so unhappy and I'm like, well, what is happiness? And that's the kind of, it's like the pursuit of something almost is happiness and who, what we have to connect with within us to achieve what we, we want to achieve in the outside world. But well, ultimately those things don't make you happy. It's that journey that you've been on. And I do very much relate to the idea of, of the challenge and the, what, what happens when you overcome obstacles, when you move through challenges and you stop and you pause because pausing is so important yeah. to use, using what I call kind sight, right, which is compassionate reflection. When you can see how far you've come and what you have actually achieved, every single person listening right now, you know, a huge percentage of people will be going, but there's the thing. I haven't got to there yet. And we keep putting that yet out in front of us. But if we actually paused and turned around and looked how far we'd come and and those mountains we climbed and those bloody you know, hand grenades that were thrown at us that we dodged and all of that, then I believe then that internal hope and resilience and happiness and what I refer to as self-worth, because I think we're singing from the same song sheet here, listening to your description of all of the things that you've moved through, even when you, know, you were getting those hand grenades in the form of, of COVID last year, you nevertheless kept moving forward. You didn't lose sight of the fact that we have ups, we have downs, but I know that I can keep moving through it because I've taken this responsibility for my life. To me, that is the essence of someone who is connected to their sense of worth. Yeah. Okay. It doesn't matter what I have or what I haven't got, what I'm doing or what I don't do. My sense of worth is still intact because of the work that you've done, because of the recognition that you've done on the changes that you've worked through. I think it's um, a really important recognition to have. Yeah, I, I would agree with that. And I think also, um, as you were talking, I, I just remembered, um, I don't know if you've read it, um, Shoe Dog by Phil Knight, the founder of Nike. Not yet, but I actually gave it to my husband for Christmas. So maybe I need to go and borrow it. <laughs> it was actually a real, I listened to it on Audible and I, you know, I don't always finish books on Audible and I've really, really enjoyed this book. But I just remember him talking about, you know, the creation of Nike and, you know, he literally built that business from the ground up and it took, years for it to really become successful but on his reflection you know like when it's a multi-billion dollar company and you know whatever like years and decades later the happiest times for him in that business were when the business was struggling it seems strange doesn't it? if you just yeah. heard, if you just heard that um in isolation i'm happiest when i'm struggling you'd be like yeah right but when you actually pull back take the lens and draw back and look at the big picture that's when I guess all of the externals disappear and you were relying on yourself. Yeah. And, that's and the, the, that the excitement and hope, like yeah. that real, like if I just keep going, I'm going to crack through. I'm just about on the, you know, like I just think about how many times over the years I've said, you know, I'm just about to crack through in my business, <laughs> you know, and, you know, no crack through, still like struggling. But then, you know, it happened and I didn't even notice it. And I guess that's one of the biggest messages that the the purpose of this particular podcast series is about, is about this idea of change. Because sometimes change comes, you know, dancing towards you with its arms thrown open and it's easy to embrace it and to just keep going. But sometimes it hides and sometimes you've got to dig through the crap to find yep. it. Yeah, so there's yeah. all different ways of, of getting to those intrinsic goals that you set. And I just, I do, you know, another teaching the sort I share with my students you know the gift is in the struggle it's like whenever you are really think you are in the pit of despair and you know there's no way out and this is the end and you just can't keep going for one second longer it's like this is where the gold is it's like mm. we've got to kind of go there within ourselves to uncover it Mm. Well, I reckon the next chapters are most often built on skin. Yeah. I mean, your entire yeah. business is wrapped around the concept of I hit rock bottom in whatever you know description that is for the individual and I backed myself. I didn't throw it away. I got up. 
I patted myself on the back. I showered myself with self-compassion. I hope there was definitely yeah. self-compassion happening there. And then going internally to look for, you know, w- what is the message I want to share? I think it's not until we get to the other side of the chasm that we can look back and go, shit, I did pretty good. You know, I, I got through that and now I want to share it with others, not with everybody, just with the people who resonate with my yeah. perspective. You know, I think one of the things that's been really powerful for me in my business is I have pretty much shared my whole journey and it didn't didn't actually start. Like so when I first, when I stopped drinking, I actually, I'd, I'd literally just started a business um, because I had been unable to get work. And there was, you know, so there was a few little key points where I had my little wake up moments, you know, but there was just this one moment where it just kind of really smacked me in the face. But I'd actually decided to start my own business because I had not been able to get work and I just had had enough of putting applications for part-time jobs that I couldn't get, you know, I wasn't even getting acknowledgements of and it was taking hours and hours and hours and I thought I've got to think more laterally about this, you know. So I wrote down everything I could do, you know, my job experience and stuff. So I, I can I can be a business consultant. You're like, I've got any idea what I'm doing here, but, yeah, I can do that because I've got like strategy planning and done project yeah. management. And then I ended up... um doing um business I uh, picked up a business coaching client but then kind of as I said like everything kind of imploded like I, I stopped drinking and then two weeks later I left my partner and I didn't have really any work and we didn't have anywhere to go and I didn't have any money and it was like I just kind of had to like that was it like I was completely exposed in every area but I just started kind of blogging. I don't even know why, just sharing what I was doing. And then I started the Happiness Hunter Walks and I started talking to people about what I was t- trying to do to sort of, you know, improve my life and my relationships and what I was doing to work with myself. And then I ran a retreat and then the walks grew and then it kind of just evolved into what then became the Happiness Hunter. It's had four different business names. It started as um, Vivacity Consulting, then it became um, business with vivacity then it was fit for biz and then it became the happiness hunter so it kind of it was an evolution and it was all done in a very public forum but I think that is now what gives me in a way credibility and it wasn't intentionally done it just kind of happened like that because people have been watching what I've been doing for years and I didn't even know they were watching <laughs> hey you know you've heard that word that we often think is banded around too much it's authenticity oh that- don't even get me started on that word <laughs> but let's just take the essence of the word right the essence of the word is is, is about not hiding about just being who you are if you just take yeah. it down to the essence right and that's exactly what you were doing and you were sharing as you went along and you had that to me that that shows a couple of things and one of which is generosity okay generosity and honesty and yeah, authenticity, I'm going to say the word again, yeah. but and, and that, that recognition of um, evolution. Fiona, that's one of the most important messages as, you know, as we're bringing this discussion full circle. That is one of the most important messages that we can share with who's listening to us today is the fact that no one turns up one day, here is my perfect business plan. Everything is has been designed on the whiteboard and I know it's going to work just tickety boo and I'm going to launch it right now and see, look at that. Perfect. It doesn't freaking work like that. Mm-hmm. It has to be evolution. You know, the expression that I use a lot is that you can't steer a parked car. Because you've yeah. got to, you've got to be in motion, like a new change, you know, four business names. You tried different services. Does this work? Does this work? Hey, does this feel good? <laughs> no, that does not. <laughs> no. And you certainly haven't priced that properly because it actually costs you money to do that. <laughs> it's all, it's all knowledge. It's all food for thought. 100%. It's all ingredients. And like I myself, you know, I've been, I've been in business since 2003. And if you went back, you used that beautiful thing of the way back machine. Have you ever used that? online no no cool little website you can visit and you can literally pop in domain names and you can see those websites looked (laughs) years ago it's actually really reassuring because it shows you that no one starts like as this beautiful polished burnished gold everyone starts as a bit a little bit crappy and then they improve and change and learn and grow and it's that incremental change isn't it it's just that iterative you know but it, it you're so right though it action trumps everything like anything because it it, I mean we we live in an energetic universe like everything is energy and energy is movement so the more we can move the more feedback we're going to get the more we can go well that that wasn't quite right well that actually worked really (laughs) well we can course correct but I was talking to a mate on the weekend actually because he's like trying to go out in his business I'm like don't worry like you're overthinking it 
you just need to take the first step. Just take a step in a vague general direction of where you think you want to go. And you're going to map out your pathway from there. It's like you've got to take the first step for the next step to appear. And often we don't take a step because we're so terrified of what might happen in 20 steps time. It's like, how do we know what's going to happen in 20 steps time? We don't even know what our first step is. But we're worried about that future event. Like we kind of project into some non-existent future rather than actually just taking forward that first step in faith, like just absolute faith that it is going to be okay, I am safe, whatever happens, I'm going to learn something from this. It's so powerful because you give yourself permission to just make mistakes and um, not go <laughs> not go in the right direction, but at <laughs> least now I know not to go that way. Exactly. As long as we're in the territory of our truth, yeah, yeah. They, we don't have to have the X marks the spot. We can nah. just, I think a lot of people, it's about they, they get concerned about what am I going to do? What's my purpose? What's this? Just start use a little bit of curiosity and start moving because you you literally you don't know where you're going to end up but you will never hit that destination without taking those first few steps and that that's the essence we've all got challenges that we need to overcome but i think as you know the probably the last sort of le- or message that I want people to hear, which was one of the most powerful things you said at the front, was about taking 100% responsibility. Mm. You know, we, we are the ones who live with ourselves inside our heads and our hearts all the time. Even, you know, after this conversation, I'm going to be back in my own little office by myself pondering pondering the lessons that you've shared here today so I have to take responsibility if something has resonated with me if you've shone a light in a certain area where I recognize I need change you're not going to come and knock on my front door and go here I am I'm here to help you make that change I have to take the actions that are going to move me in the direction of my dreams and what happens is when you take action when you make that decision and you take action like a decision is an action it's a very very powerful action the universe will rise up to meet you, but you have to take that step forward first. There's no getting around it. Completely. Well, my darling, like I knew as we started this conversation that we were you know, talking from the same page. And I'll make sure on the page on my website that there'll be more details about you and all the places where people can follow you. But right now, where is the best spot I've just listened to this conversation. I want to go and find out more about the Happiness Hunter. Tell me a little bit where the best spot is to find you online. So probably the best. So you could go and check out the Happiness Hunter podcast. Um, But I've actually got a group on Facebook called Today is a Great Day, Morning Mindset and Motivation. And it's really just designed as a community. We've got... um, the Happiness Hunter walks are in there. There's lots of loads of um, master free masterclasses and trainings that people can just go in, have a look at, watch, go and implement, make some change in your life. Perfect. Change starts today. And, you know, one of the things that definitely helps us when it comes to keeping us uplifted and on that emotional scale that sort of facilitates change is music. And one of those way showers for a lot of us, as you were mentioning before, are books. So I love to ask all of my guests, what's a song or two that I can add into the Your Next Chapter song list, the playlist on Spotify? And what's a book or two that perhaps I should get on my very full, but always room for more shelves. What do, you re- what do you recommend for us? Okay, music, Whatever It Takes by Imagine Dragons. It's got oh. this wonderful line in it, Whatever It Takes. Um, I can feel the adrenaline running through my veins. It's just like, you know, when you're in the throes of taking action and you just feel so invigorated and alive. Yes. So I love that song. And also St. Elmo's Fire by John Parr. Because to me that's about overcoming your ego. That's how I listen to that. It's just like I don't care. I don't care what the voices in my head say. I'm just going to go for it. Love it. Love it. Love it. I remember seeing those fire very clearly. And oh, about, yeah. And how about your books? Okay. So there, well, there's a few books. So um, 12 Rules for Life by Jordan Peterson. Very, I really like Jordan Peterson. I love the way he thinks and I love the way he explains things. And he has this wonderful um, bit right at the end where he's got the pen of light. And it just really stuck with me. But highly, highly recommend that book, um, 12 Rules for Life. And then there's actually um, probably the, one of the first books I ever read, you know, sort of in this self-development de- space was The Big Leap by Gay Hendricks. And I'm sure oh, yeah. you're all over that. Um, but, you know, interestingly, as I'm going further along, I listened to it on Audible about three months ago and 
it, it didn't resonate with me in quite the same way because obviously I've I've evolved myself from mm. having read that book. Um, but then there's three really key books that, you know, I've probably one of my biggest obstacles to overcome has been finances, like my money mindset, feeling worthy, feeling valuable, allowing myself to to um, believe that I could receive money, that I could hold on to money. Like it's been a massive challenge for me to overcome. So, you know, before when I shared about that increase in revenue, like I'm multiple six figures now, it's not even about the six figures. It's about the fact that my growth, that that five hundred fifty percent that re- represents the growth. That was such that was such a significant figure for me. But so the three books are the Barefoot Investor by Scott Pape, yeah, Profit so First, yep. Profit First by Mike Michalowicz, and The Richest Man in Babylon by George S. Clayson. And those three books combined really helped me formulate a really solid personal financial plan, a really solid business financial plan. You know, it was all about paying myself first. And then The Richest Man in Babylon, which is about these parables from fables from like 4,000 years ago, really helped me because that was also about paying yourself first as well and you know how a really simple way to think about how you've got you know one dollar come in 10 cents goes here 20 cents goes here this is how you pay your debtors off this is how you pay creditors off and it was really simple so that look that's more than one recommendation (laughs) that's okay i'll I'll let you get away with those because they're all really valuable ones and they'll form a part of the recommended book list that'll be on the new website once the podcast series comes out how exciting i am looking forward to it fiona it's been an absolute delight to talk with you there is so much more i'm sure we literally could have talked for hours i've got absolutely no doubt about that but we'll make sure that our listeners have the opportunity to find out more about that concept of the life integration that we began to touch on that they'll see on your website and my guess is there any last thoughts that you would like to leave with someone who's sitting there and going 100 responsibility i can change oh can i do this well, you know, actually, uh, what I will leave you with is that idea of life integration. And this is a concept I teach, and it's about, it's rather than work-life balance. And the idea of life integration is that everything that we do in our life is inextricably linked, but we are the foundation point of our life. So if we not, are not well within ourselves, balanced and whole, emotionally, physically, spiritually, you know, mentally, in all of the ways, the rest of our life is going to be out of balance. So life integration is about giving yourself permission to put yourself first in your life, not from a place of selfishness, but from a place of enlightened self-interest because when you are operating at your best for yourself, you are going to be showing up the best for everybody else and everything else in your life. Enlightened self-interest. Now, that's a new definition. I love that perspective. That certainly trumps anyone arguing that that would be selfish to put yourself first. No, absolutely. Fiona, thank you again, my darling. It's been enlightening to to nab your word as well. Thank you so much for having me, Angela. And I'm looking forward to coming to your next chapter dinner next time you're in Melbourne too. I haven't make been sure. able to make one yet, but I I will be there. I'll definitely be popping down again before the end of the year. So you Wonderful. will be a guest of honour. Wonderful. I will see you then. Thanks, Angela. And to you, our lovely listener, I really hope that you can sit there and hear the message that Fiona has been sharing today. No matter where you are, no matter what is going on, you can actually pause right now and make that choice that you are going to take 100% responsibility for you. And a big part of that means stepping into that next chapter, that potential that's waiting for you, that idea that keeps tapping you on the shoulder, that thing that you need to let go of, that new version of you. It's just a decision away. And when you take that enlightened way of looking at yourself, that enlightened self-interest, and you are working at your highest potential, then the ripple effect on everyone around you, your clients, your friends, your family, and more... It's just enormous. Can you feel that? Just take that first step today. The other steps will appear. Just take that first one. That's the message that I want you to take today as you move away into your next chapter. So thanks so much for listening. Until next time, take care. 